Good morning, Pastor Sean here. Uh, today is Friday, December 23rd. This is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, short one today, just a single verse. Luke 1, uh, verse 80. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. All right, so John goes right from being born to... Uh, Growing up, becoming strong in spirit, and then as as an adult or uh, later, um, goes goes off to stay in the wilderness. He was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. So until his public ministry started, he was off in the wilderness. Um, which you know that that would have <laughs> you, you can see where he would have most likely gathered quite a reputation um, of people about this guy. You know, and, and certainly, um, you know, you, you, you would imagine that there might have been some remembrances of, you know, the, the strange circumstances surrounding his, his birth. Um, so maybe he was uh, continually kind of in the back of people's heads, you know, when they thought John, they, they were thinking, oh, this is something special, something special is going to happen. And then he goes off and lives in the wilderness, um, which... Is odd <laughs> by, by our standards. Uh, of course, you know, uh, Israel, the people of Israel uh, with the history of, of living in the wilderness, um, you know, might have seen that as a, um, a hearkening back to the uh, history of the people. But still, um, you know, it's, it's certainly something that is noteworthy. Um, so here's this, this guy, you know, wearing camel hair vests and eating locusts and wild honey. Um, definitely. Definitely interesting. Definitely a unique kind of guy. Um, but the, the the thing that kind of captures um, our attention here is is that he he's in the wilderness and he's he stays there. He lives there. He is there until the day of his public appearance to Israel. And um, would imagine it's hard. It's not easy living in the wilderness. Um, you've got to give up a lot. <laughs> you know, you're giving up all the creature comforts of living in civilization. Certainly. Um, but, you know, what? Why, why does he go out in the wilderness? You know, you could point to Isaiah's prophecy, you know, a voice crying from the wilderness. So he had to be there. You could go there. Um, but, um, you know, in, in a kind of a, I don't know if you call it practical sense. Well, just another way of looking at it would be that um, to go into the wilderness, to forsake all of the comforts of, of living in, in the cities and towns, um, to, to humble yourself in that way, to deprive yourself of all the other things that um, occupy your time, that keep you busy, that, that, that would go on, um, would have given him a lot of time to, to seek God, to, to listen. To listen to God, um, to uh, um, to meditate on on God's word, uh, plenty of time, really. And so, what um, what this shows us, and and the encouragement really that we can glean just from this this simple verse here, is how you know in times that we find ourselves in the wilderness, obviously not the actual wilderness, but wilderness times in our lives when um, we are finding ourselves in, in a period of, of, of need, of, of not having what, what, uh, what, what we want, what we need, um, times when things get difficult, hardships, um, you know, when, when, when we find that things are, are being removed from us. Um, these are times of wilderness for us. And often, you know, we look at that and that's, that's very bad. You know, it's, it's uncomfortable. We don't like it. And um, we often see it as a uh, maybe a, a judgment or, or some sort of punishment, maybe. But, uh, you know, another way to turn that around and to look at times like that, and then we all experience them 
where we all go through them over and over and over again. Some you might be going through it now. You might have just come out of one or things might be going well. And maybe there's a, a time of wilderness on the horizon, whatever the case may be. Um, times like that in the wilderness where, where things are removed from us are actually a good time for us to, to listen to God to listen for it to his voice, to, to be in his word, to let his, uh, his word speak to us. Okay. And, um, you know, he can, he calls us closer to him in those times. And, and certainly, um, one of the, the ways that we understand periods of time like that is that whatever God's rationale is for, for allowing these times or sending these times to us, usually it's, we can see it in terms of, I need to learn or relearn, usually it's relearn, <laughs> to trust in God, to turn to him, to realize that he is what I need, that the, the things that I am, I am going without right now, wh while they might be nice, while they, while they might offer comfort, um, God is the one who offers true comfort. He is the one who provides everything. And so, um, you know, you, you think of when, when Jesus says, you know, come to me, all who are heavy laden, you know, all who labor and, and are heavy laden, uh, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you um, and learn from me, for I am gentle and uh, lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Um, you know, Jesus calls us to himself and says, you, you've got a lot going on. <laughs> there's, there's a lot on your plate. Let, let me shoulder that. Take on my yoke. You know, you, you've got a heavy yoke. Let me take that from you. And you take my yoke. My yoke is, is light. You know, my, my yoke is, is mercy and grace. Um, take on that. Uh, and, and we often find ourselves, often the, the closest, closest we often get to God is in those times of wilderness. Um, when, when other people might say, oh, that you must feel the farthest away from God. Actually, when, when I have... <laughs> When, when I'm when I'm forced down on my knees and to trust in Him and, and forced to to turn things over to God because I can't handle them anymore, those are usually the times when I am closest to God, um, which makes sense because those are the times when I'm closest, you know, to drawing near to the cross of of being, um, you know, brought near to to Christ and His suffering. You know, my suffering links me to to His suffering on the cross, um, and so uh, you know that that is usually when when we experience, you know, the word the most is during those wilderness travels. So, um, you know, I, I hope when you think about this and think about the, the, the good side of being in the wilderness, that'll encourage you and uh, give you some hope that even so, if you're, if you're going through it now, about to, whatever, um, you know, God is there. And we, we think that, oh, well, you know, I'm in the wilderness. Where's God? He's there. He's there in the wilderness with you, um, providing for you. He'll bring you through it. Uh, so good, good reminder for us and uh, a nice, nice, simple one, one verse devotion for, for us today. Good stuff. All right. Let us pray. I thank you, my heavenly father, through Jesus Christ, your dear son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day from all, also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Well, blessings to you on this uh, Friday, Friday before Christmas Eve. So uh, have a wonderful day and uh, yeah, we'll be back at it tomorrow morning and then Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and all that good stuff. So uh, until tomorrow, peace be with you.